I, I think that there are two things here. First one, the whole world is discussing digitalization, and especially the role of AI and its uh, impact on our lives and especially on our jobs. And second question, skills is another hot topic. Uh, we discuss skills not only in the framework of digitalization and AI penetration, but also in the framework of other very challenging uh, drivers of change, such as uh, climate change, such as uh, demographic changes, and what it brings to us, the digital economy, the, the green economy, the care economy, which is also linked to the demographic changes. And skills development is actually the means of uh, making the transition successful. Without skills, we cannot implement the most ambitious policies, whether they are digital or whether they are green or anything else. Uh, so that's why this forum is important. In the ILO, we also uh, keep quite a lot of attention to both subjects. We are just establishing a new observatory on, uh, on AI and uh, work in the digital economy uh, with a quite ambitious program on research, on, on collaboration, on uh, inviting experts and also understanding what policy regulations are already in place and what has to be still done. And we also have quite extensive program on skills and lifelong learning, supporting countries, but also implementing research. And we have a skills forum. So I think it actually we, we can benefit from a lot of cross fertilization of these different forests and collaboration with ITU and the network of the ITU and their expertise. And definitely both audiences and our constituencies would greatly benefit from that. To bridge the digital skills gap, of course, is not, is not easy. For, for the moment, we have some imp important calculations on uh, digitalization, and we know that, of course, it is a major disruptor, at least uh, in the short term, so there will be quite a lot of changes. But these are not like uh, the entire jobs being affected, but rather tasks uh, in those jobs, in, in occupations. And therefore, uh, all our analysis actually says that there will be more jobs eventually generated due to uh, rise in productivity, due to reinvestment of, uh, of business profits. Uh, but of course, these jobs do not have to be in the same sectors. They do not have to be in the same localities. And that means we have to uh, massively upgrade, reskill, upskill workforce, current workforce, and also future workforce. And what, what we also know that uh, as a result of the digital transition, um, we hope that with the, with the increase of broadband connectivity to developing countries, the digital sector will work there. And this is where the, the bulk of the digital um, deficiency of skills are, because we speak about uh, universal digital literacy, and that is task number one, for example, for Africa or for least developed countries. But we also know that AI, with its penetration to, to advanced economies, uh, will alter tasks and jobs also in highly skilled uh, segments of the economy and will also affect highly skilled labor. And they will require also some uh, augmentation of their skills with technology skills, and including all the workers, and especially women, because women are hugely underrepresented in d digital jobs uh, across the world for the moment, and this has to change. So the world will definitely win from training more women, for preparing young workers, for looking not only at the higher education sector, but also at the technical vocation education and training, so this kind of middle skill level. For, uh, from reforming technical vocation education and training, and also uh, by establishing some motivational mechanisms to engage into training and to invest into training by governments, by employers, by workers, uh, from all those sites, lifelong learning, because we cannot uh, anymore train people with one qualification for the rest of their life. That is not working anymore. The, the life, the working life is changing too much that there should be some uh, learning throughout life. So what makes it work is, yes, as I said, uh, this uh, investment, scaling up investment from all sides, private sector and government. But also uh, for this, we need uh, 
social dialogue, because without social dialogue, without communication between education and training sector and uh, enterprises, industries, employers, but also trade unions, workers, because they are the ones who, who bear the burden of the whole disruption and change. Without this, we don't get the uh, signals from the labor market to education and training. We don't understand how to adapt curricula, how to develop the new competency standards. So this is like a silver bullet uh, social dialogue. And then one last thing I would like to say, uh, of course there are many elements, but what is really important is uh, this kind of the comprehensive approach to, to, to policies, because of course skills are super important. Sometimes I say that uh, skills development provide a kind of a um, facilitator, uh, uh, enabler for the change, but it's also a buffer, a buffer that prevents from uh, very negative consequences of, uh, of disruption. Uh, but at the same time, skills cannot resolve everything, right? So we need comprehensive policies that are coordinated. So if we speak about some digital solution or technological investment or green investment, there should be uh, a complementary policy on the skills development side employment policy as well, industrial policies, and how they all meet and coordinate it across the board, across different ministries.